Let's start with Liverpool. Now, they are keen to bring in Mateus Nunes from Wolves in the summer. Now, he's on the list. It's a long list of replacements that they can get to try and replenish and fix that midfield. Uh, he was rumoured to be a target last summer before his move to Wolves materialised. Um, but then there's also those contracting, contrasting opinions that say that they weren't interested in him and they were. But it seems to be that they were actually interested in getting the deal done before he moved. And we all know that Liverpool are absolutely desperate to kind of fix their midfield issues Uh uh, Naby Keita, Oxley Chamberlain, a little bit older now. I think they'll kind of be looking to leave. Uh, when you kind of look at Tiago, Henderson, Fabinho, they've got a combined age of 90 years old. And I think that this is where the biggest problem is actually coming for Liverpool this season. You know, that they're old, they're, they're lacking a little bit of mobility. And kind of the, the high octane football that we're used to be seeing from Liverpool, it's just not possible anymore. And I think that's also kind of exposing their defence and causing those issues because of the frailties they've got in that midfield. Liverpool fans, I want to know, do you think Mateus Nunes is a good signing for the club? Is this someone that you think you should have gone and got in the summer when you were sniffing around him before his move to Wolves? Do you, do you regret not having that signing? Uh, and of course, they did bring in Arthur Mello. He has been out again the entire season uh, with injuries. So they have been unlucky on that front. But do you think they left it too late in the summer? I think that it, it's clear to see that they probably have. Um, and of course, they, they still want Jude Bellingham. My, my question mark is over Jude Bellingham, that if Liverpool do not get Champions League football in the summer, is Jude Bellingham going to want to go there? So they're going to have to have other targets to rebuild this midfield, uh, as, as well as just kind of eyeing up Bellingham, as well as one or two other players. Um, looking at the defence as well this season, it hasn't been too good. And as I mentioned, I do think that that is potentially a result of less cover, in the midfield because of how frail it's been. But do they need to look at another centre-half? I think AGT mentioned yesterday it's something that they, they would be considering. Uh, obviously, Van Dijk has been out with an injury. Um, he is someone that has been in and out with injuries, actually, over the past few seasons. Uh, are you happy, Liverpool fans, with Canate and Matip? Do you want more? Are you happy with Joe Gomez? Are you happy with Trent? Are you still happy with Andy Robertson? Is there anyone in that back line that you think needs to be strengthened or changed because you're not performing? Performing overall at the same level as you were for the past five seasons. And that is completely normal, especially when you look at football cycles and the burnout and how high octane that type of football Liverpool were playing was. But aside from the midfield, where else do Liverpool fans think that they need to strengthen? Um, of course, they also brought in Cody Gakpo. Um, it's a little bit too soon to tell uh, the impact that he's having at Liverpool uh, in those first three games. They, they, they haven't performed uh, probably to the best of their ability, but they've also got injuries up front. Luis Diaz is still out. Uh, Nunes missed the last game as well. Are you happy? Are you seeing improvements in in in, uh, in Nunes as well? Because he came under a lot of criticism, uh, mainly for the finishing and potentially uh, some of the attitude uh, at the beginning of the season, which is, is is now simmered down after that red card against Fulham. Um, are you happy with what you're seeing up front? And, and Mo Salah, you have to ask the question after receiving that bump in new contract. Are you concerned of the drop-off that he's had. And of course, as a Tottenham fan, I understand about this drop-off and contracts. Obviously, we gave a brand new contract to, to, to Son uh, and we're seeing a very big drop-off. And, um, you know, I, I just wonder from a Liverpool perspective, do you have question marks over Mo Salah at the moment as well? So very keen to get your thoughts on that. Is Mateus Nunes the right fit for Liverpool? Who else should you be looking at? Where else would you strengthen? Um, and if you have anyone on your list and also Liverpool fans, does any of this fall back on Jurgen Klopp? I know how loyal Liverpool fans are to Klopp and many, many have, have said there is absolutely no blame being pointed in the direction at the moment. But I'm, I am interested to know if anyone does blame Jurgen Klopp. Definitely want to hear your thoughts on that. Uh, right, moving on. Let's have a little look at Arsenal. Uh, they are currently moved, uh, linked with a move, sorry, for Declan Rice. Um, this, however, is not potentially going to materialise until the summer. Now, we know how amazing Declan Rice is. Uh, we've seen him perform countless times for West Ham as well as England. He's, he's been fantastic. Um, and he has made it clear that he is not going to be signing a new contract at West Ham, despite their efforts to try to get him to stay. They've given him many contracts saying bumper deals as much money as you want he said publicly I, I want to be playing Champions League football and I think that when you look at the position West Ham are in at the table at the moment they're in a relegation battle are they going to 
stay with David Moyes. They're going to kind of need a, a bit of an overhaul, which is worrying because of how much money they've spent, especially bringing in the likes of Paqueta in the summer. Um, but I think it's clear to see that he'll only have a year left on the contract. They, they can trigger um, the other year that they do have in the deal. But I hope for Declan Rice's sake, as we mentioned in our uh, weekend roundup yesterday, we, we do hope that that won't happen because he's, he's so good. It would be good to see him get that big move that he wants and that he's after. Um, and of course, he is highly rated. There's going to be a lot of clubs on the radar for him. And it would be an amazing signing if Arsenal could get that one done. It would mean cover. It would mean competition as well uh, for the likes of Thomas Partey, who's having a brilliant season. Um, but is Rice what, what you need, Arsenal fans? What, what do you think you need in the present? Because this is something that's going to be put on hold uh, for the time being until the summer, but we need to talk about the present and what's going on now. Of course, we know that you missed out on the signing of Madrid. He's now a Chelsea player. Um, they've spent, you know, an extortionate amount of money. I know that it is being spread out because of FFP, but it's a very high release clause that they'd set on Madrid. And of course, Chelsea did meet that. But who do you target next? Because the position Arsenal are in, you are in the driving seat for the title. Effectively, we're getting to the point where we're going to be saying, this is Arsenal's title to lose if they're going to do that. And I think that this window is super important. I said it all along for Arsenal uh, to kind of strengthen your bench and your squad because it's doing fantastic at the moment. And there's nothing to say that it couldn't last out the whole season. But if you do get more injuries to key players, for example, Saka or Martinelli or Partey, you know, you you may be a little bit weak or anyone in your defence as well. Um, you were briefly linked with a move for Rafinha. Um, he, of course, moved to Barca in the summer from Leeds. Uh, the, the player has ruled that out. He would have been a great option for Arsenal. Um, he was also linked with Chelsea at the moment. It seems that anyone that Arsenal's looking at Chelsea have looked at and the same in the summer. And that never materialised, of course, and he ended up going to Barcelona. But we, we know how good he is from his time at Leeds. He's that fast-paced attacking winger, his the ability to score goals. That would have been really the perfect fit for Arsenal. Um, and just having a look at who else you could sign in this window, there has been initial contact made with Bayer Leverkusen for Moussa Diaby. Uh, the asking price of that player, though, is expected to be around €100 million. Euros. And what I think Arsenal have learned from maybe splashing the cash on, on players like Pepe or um, big big deals for Meza Ozil or Bamiyang and things like that and spending big money or big contracts. I think they've learned from that. And I think that's a really good thing from an Arsenal perspective because they've given themselves a target and they've set, I, I would assume they've set themselves a price cap as to what they want to pay. Um, so they don't get themselves into that same situation where they spend loads and loads of money and then potentially it doesn't work out or they're lumbered with a player uh, like we've seen in the past. Um, however, on the flip side, that now could come back to bite them because the prices in the transfer market are so elevated these days that you look at a player that's probably not worth 100 million or 80 million and, you know, you, you wonder why on earth is that the price? But it's because if you want the player, you're going to have to spend big. So Arsenal fans, what do you think you should do in this window? Do you think you need to go big and, and spend like you were going to potentially do on Madrid? If there is anyone in mind, I'm so interested to hear what, what you guys think and who you would want to go for. Now, Madrid, uh, that case is closed. Um, do you want more strength in midfield? Do you want another centre-back? What what do you need? Or do you want more attacking players to get, to get you over the line? But I do think that potentially if Arsenal don't spend in this window, it could come back to bite them. We saw last, uh, last January when they didn't spend. Um, I think they needed a striker of some sorts and uh, they, they didn't go and get one. And ultimately that, that may have been the difference with them getting top four or not. Um, and, you know, from an Arsenal perspective, you'd, you'd hate to be in that position where, you know, it gets to a bit of a dogfight at the end of the season for the title with, with Manchester City or uh, Manchester United potentially. Uh, and, and, you know, you haven't gone and strengthened in January, even if it's one player or two players, that could be the difference with getting you over the line. So Arsenal fans, I really want to know what you think on that. Let's do another quick roundup though and see what else is going on. Uh, United, they are holding talks with Inter Milan uh, about Denzel Dumfries. Uh, be around 35 million. That could be a very good signing for Manchester United. They've already bought in about Weghorst as well. Uh, we knew that that was kind of coming and on the cards. He was at Beskitsas and, um, you know, that, that loan deal from Burnley has ended and he will be a United player to the end of the season. And that just shows that, you know, Arsenal fans look at United. They are making sure they bolster. They're making sure they have a plan A and a plan B. Uh, with signing someone like uh, Weghorst as well, that long ball, if you're flagging in the last 20 minutes, that might be something you need to look at. Uh, but yet, Denzel Dumfries, that's someone they are linked to. Uh, Newcastle are looking at signing... Uh 
Conor Gallagher from Chelsea. Um, I'm a really big fan of, of Conor Gallagher. Um, Matisse actually mentioned in his uh, keep bench cell that he would have got rid of Conor Gallagher. Um, but for me personally, I think that he's a really good mid midfielder. I think he's dynamic. And I think we saw how good he could be last season at Palace as well. And actually Palace is suffering and missing him massively. Um, so I think that'd be a great signing for any club if they can get their hands uh, on Conor Gallagher. Um, and just something on Tottenham, they are still in talks with Sporting Lisbon about signing Pedro Porro. Um, the release clause is 45 million euros, which is 40 million pounds. Um, I believe Tottenham have offered well under that, um, as per usual. Will they meet the transfer uh, transfer fee and, and the release clause? I don't know, but I, I do know that a right back is something Tottenham desperately need, um, amongst many other things. Another one which was a uh, submitted bid for uh, Leandro Trossard of Brighton. I think they uh, they bid something around £12 million. Uh, I think the valuation for Trossard was around about 25 to £30 million. So again, always trying to look for a bargain rather than just paying the money and improving the squad. But it's uh, it's definitely interesting to see what's going to be going on at the back end of this window. I have a feeling that all the all the big deals and movements are going to come very, very late on. Um, it's been a relatively quiet January so far, unless you're Chelsea. Um, but I expect it to kind of pick up in that last week or so um, before the window closes. So keep your eyes peeled. Let me know who you think uh, you, your club should have, any club that is, but definitely want to know from you Arsenal fans and you Liverpool fans what you need to do in this window.